What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are officially doing an unboxing and installation of this beauty right here. This is the Hummingbird Helix 9. Very excited about this. This is the first fish finder I've had at this level. Right now I use a Garmin Striker 4 Plus on the Pelican Bass Raider. Did a huge upgrade to this unit right here for the John boat, but need to get it unboxed and get it on the boat. And it's about that time. So let's, let's see what's in the box. Make sure I have what I need and get this thing loaded on the boat. All right, man, I'm excited about this. This thing has chirp, mega side imaging, mega down imaging, the work. So, all right, we've got some kind of bracket here. Got some zip ties. All right, next up, what do we have? What do we have? Ooh, transducer. Man, this thing is long. This is like seven, eight inches long. So I actually bought this right here. This is the just an accessory that allows me to connect my transducer to the trolling motor. All right, so we've got transducer, transducer cable. So now we get to the mounts. This is one of the things I wanted to see. And we do have a mount here. Looks like I need to order a mount for it. So it'll mimic this, but be facing this way and mount to the boat. All right, we've got manuals in here, operation summary. Oh, it's in color, that's nice. Now we get into the actual unit itself. Man, this thing is pretty heavy. You always know when something's good by how much it weighs. And this thing is a beauty. I love peeling off this plastic because it's nothing but newness underneath. This is actually a rubber cover. Ooh, you know we have to we have to take a look under the hood. Here's the mount that I decided to go with after doing some research. This is the Decket mount, and it comes in two versions, one that's straight 90 degree angle here, and one that's angled at a 20 degree angle. I went with the 20 degree angle, don't know if it'll make a huge difference or not, but I figured any tilt I get, in addition to the tilt that the fish finder does by itself will help. So I went with a 20 degree angle. You can see how it slopes down. A lot of great reviews on this mount. I'll leave a link in the description below to this. Got it off of Amazon. This is not the permanent install for the fish finder. I just did this with whatever nuts and bolts I had just to be able to size up where I'm gonna install it. And this is how it's gonna look when it's all said and done, something like this. So I'm kind of debating in between two different locations of where to install the fish finder. It'll either go right here, which is my preferred place, right in front of the foot pedal. So all I have to do is just look down. If that doesn't work out for whatever reason, I'm gonna install it kind of cat a corner right here next to the tray, next to the foot pedal. So I'll have the fish finder, pedal, and of course, trolling motor, everything up front. I'll figure that out as I go. For right now, I wanna work on extending the power cables from the fish finder that come with the fish finder all the way back to the fuse box in there. I will do wire management after I run my last wire, which is for the fish finder and get that nice and clean looking. All right, so let's go ahead and run these wires, positive and negative wire. Uh, the negative, I'll be able to just connect straight to the bus bar that's underneath, if you guys can see that. And the positive wire, I'll go ahead and extend that one to the fuse box. So I'm out of shrink tubing, so I'm gonna do a bunch of different tubing, starting with a smaller one, which is still a little big, as you guys can see. I'll do like two or three little small leftover scrap pieces I have, shrink it over, and then put this, slide this big one over. This one's way oversized, but should fit once I get these on there first. And depending on how that looks in the end, maybe I'll throw some liquid tape on it too, just to play it safe. I love to do things just once. I hate to repeat and have to do things over or fix things later, try to minimize that as much as possible. So I'm going in best case scenario with what I got. Of course, you got to slide on your shrink tubing before you do your connectors. And these are self soldering connectors. I've used these throughout the build. Just want to get this right over the center line where the actual solder is and then heat that up. I'm basically just piecing this together, guys. All right, we got the smaller pieces on there. Just gonna slide this big boy over here. So we got three layers on here. Came out pretty good, it's not perfect. Might throw some liquid tape on there if I feel like it, but, and you can see the sealant oozing out. Hopefully you guys can see that. That's what you wanna see with these self-sealing shrink tubing. All right, while that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and switch gears. I'm gonna let that cool down and dry. Switch gears over to the mount for the fish finder. Go ahead and get the final bolts in here. Take these little small ones out. 
switch those bolts over to the permanent bolts. What I'm going with are the number 10 machine screws, stainless steel from Home Depot, 1032. They didn't have one inch. I wanted one inch, but they only had one and one fourth. So I went with that. I even think three quarter inch would work, but they didn't have three quarter inch screws either. So it'll stick out a little bit, but I won't really care. Also have the number 10 washers. And then of course the lock nuts, 10, number 10, 32, okay? There you go. So the way this mount is made, it gives you a lot of different options to use to be able to mount your fish finder, the, the gimbal that comes with it. So as you can see, I have tons of different options, tons of different holes to be able to utilize. I found the four that works for the gimbal for the Helix 9, which are equidistant on the mount itself. So it works out pretty good for me. All right, now that we've done that, we'll go ahead and get this liquid tape on here. Again, guys, I don't really need this, but I'm just gonna put it on here just to play it safe. This is for power to the fish finder. I just wanna protect all power cables as best as possible. All right, that's all in there. Nice and tight, not going anywhere. All right, the liquid tape looks dry enough. It's only been about, I don't know, not even five minutes. And it looks like it's dry to the touch. I know it's not completely dry, but it's dry enough for me to move on to the next part and actually get this ground connected to the bus bar underneath the deck and then make the final connection to the fuse box in there for the power. All right, I can finally go ahead and mount this switch panel. These screws that came with the switch panel aren't that great. Matter of fact, I tried to use one. I drilled a pilot hole and the screw still broke. So I'm going with the tech screws I've been using throughout the build. These are very good screws. I highly recommend these straight from Home Depot. Again, just painted the heads black so that it will go with the switch panel. All right, we just finished running power. Now I'm gonna work on the transducer. I am gonna mount the transducer on the trolling motor, so I had to buy this adapter right here to make that happen. Here's the transducer. Connecting the transducer to the bracket should be pretty simple, but we'll go ahead and get that on there and then stick it onto the trolling motor. So we're gonna get the transducer mounted to the motor, screwed in eight screws, stainless steel screws, screwed the bracket into the transducer. That was the prep work I did. This is the front of the transducer. Of course, make sure it's facing the front of the trolling motor. And there's this little slot right here it should fit inside the skeg of the trolling motor, this piece right here. So it's gonna go on there just like this. All right guys, so I got the wires all tied down. I did remove the wire tie from right here. I said not to put one right here. It's not a good place. And to put one up top instead. Two points at the very top and right here. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and mount the decket mount. So I'm just gonna drill up, mark my holes, drill them out, use these number 20 screws. I'm going with two and a half inch long screws. These are what they look like straight from Home Depot. And I have quarter inch washers to go underneath as well. And I have the lock nuts to go with it as well. So four holes, I'm gonna drill those out, get this all set up. Got my four holes marked. I have a 932nd drill bit, same drill bit I've used for other things around this build. And 932nd will drill the perfect size pilot hole for the bolts right here, quarter inch number 20s.
All right, guys, that was not fun at all. Ran into some issues screwing in these bolts. As you can see, I have some posts here that I installed to reinforce the deck. And if you watch my previous videos, you'll see originally I had this foot pedal cut out further up closer to the bow of the boat, but the trolling motor cable wasn't, wasn't long enough to be able to reach the foot tray. I had cut out basically the majority of this center of this deck. So I decided to reinforce it with two posts, one on each side. And when I drilled the pilot holes, two of the holes went right next to each one of these posts. Luckily for me, I was able to get three of the four screws in. So I think I'm, I'm solid with that. I don't think there's gonna be any issues with it shaking or being loose. All in all, this thing is very solid. Maybe some year down the line, if I end up taking up this deck, I can actually move the two posts and get the fourth bolt in, but totally not necessary right now to go uninstall this trolling motor and everything just to do that. That's not going anywhere. So as a last step, you wanna install the cable tray. And what that is, is instead of having your individual cores just individually plugged into the back of the finder, you actually install it into this tray and it has a slot for each type of plug. You've got five plugs back here for different things. For my setup, I'll only be using a power plug, which goes right here, and a transducer that goes right here. So this cable tray is what's used to keep it securely in place so that it doesn't ac accidentally get pulled out or you trip on it or something like that. It keeps it secure, it doesn't keep coming out. So we're gonna go ahead and install this tray. And if you notice on the back of Hummingbird, each plug has its own unique shape. So you cannot confuse where any plug is supposed to go. It's only gonna have one shape that matches the connection on the wire. So in the end, you can see exactly how it's set up. The plugs are flush right there, ready to go. All right guys, from here, you just slide it in till it clicks. There you go, and I'm done. So we're at the head. Let's go ahead and power it on just to make sure that the connections work. And we have power, guys. Excellent, very, very happy. I am not gonna go through demoing this because I do have to learn this unit. Just wanna show you that everything works. So there you have it, guys. Hummingbird Helix 9 install on a John boat. One thing I do appreciate about Hummingbird are the instructions are very, very thorough. So if you buy one of these units, you don't have to really guess much on how to do any of the installation. It gives you the blow by blow. And yes, I did read the instructions, guys. This is my first graph like this. All in all, this install went very smoothly. I did this video in case anybody was out there like myself not too long ago, trying to figure out exactly what comes with this fish finder and how to install it, especially on a Jumbo. Click that subscribe button below. Give us that thumbs up if you got something out of the video. Also, don't forget, check us out on Instagram. We've got a lot of cool things posted there that's not on this YouTube channel. As always, stay safe out there, guys. See you on the next video.